Hello and good morning. Welcome to my garden podcast. The date is Sunday the 12th of April 2020 and the time is, would you believe it, 8.42. Yes, I'm in my garden early in the morning. This is very um, unique for me. <laughs> I'm, I really want to be an early bird. Um, I'm usually, you know, I usually go to bed late and then wake up late. Even if I wake up early, I just stay in bed and I don't feel motivated to, you know, just jump out of bed straight away. But I really want to change that. I really want to shift myself to become more of a morning person. So um, lately I've just been falling asleep, <laughs> listening to YouTube videos and then dragging myself to my bedroom like at crazy times like 2 and 3 a.m but yesterday I kind of felt sleepy around 11 o'clock and I was like, okay I'm just gonna go straight to bed and I was listening to uh, YouTube videos but in bed and then this morning I woke up naturally at six o'clock and I was like whoa and so um I got up and and then you know quickly washed up and then I was like oh I'm still feeling a bit tired let me just go back into bed and do some reading do some research so I started reading this book that somebody gifted me it's called Voyages and it's just a whole different perspective of what reality is and I think it's a book of you know like history and stuff like that I just started reading it so I'm getting into it but it's yeah it's really interesting so then I was like okay I'm gonna do some reading in bed and then I'm gonna go to the garden early in the morning because that's why I said yesterday I was like I want to be in my garden early in the morning because that's the best time because it's you know the sunlight is really good at that time um it's the uh, morning sun is the best time before 11 o'clock and and also the air is really nice and clean and crisp and you know as soon as I got to the garden and I breathed in that crisp air and I was like yes that feels really good and I just feel like my vibration you know increases when I'm in the garden in the morning and and it's like everyone is still sleeping and it's really quiet and it just it just feels like it's my me time and it just feels really really good so I really want to continue this um routine of you know waking up early maybe I'm I wish I was the type of person that as soon as I woke up I just jump out of bed but I just need some time to just you know slowly uh you know get up so I like to just read in bed in the morning and then slowly uh get up so and that's fine I'm I don't want to push myself too you know too much but you know getting out of bed uh I think I eventually got out of bed at 7.30. That's that's good for me because <laughs> I'm not an early bird. So I was like, oh, I'm impressed. So I got up and then I washed up and got ready for the day. And now I'm in my garden, which I'm really happy about. So I've got the whole morning um, to record podcast episodes. I've got lots to talk about. So I'm really happy that I've started early. So I might split the podcast into couple of different parts episodes as such um yeah so yeah this is going to be like the new me I'm gonna so that's the idea you set the intention and then you slowly work towards it make it into like incremental steps so for me it's about going to bed early ish like around 10 or 11 o'clock and then just waking up naturally whatever time that is, you know, whether it's six o'clock or seven o'clock or eight o'clock. And then allowing myself to have that half an hour, to have that one hour in bed and to do some reading. It reminds me of my English teacher during A-levels. And he used to tell me that he, when he used to wake up, the first thing he used to do is read in bed. And I thought that was so unique because Everyone reads, well not everyone, but the usual thing is that, oh, you read at bedtime before you go to sleep. But he used to read upon waking up and I thought that was really delightful. I thought that was really, you know, just so unique. And, and so I've always remembered that. And so I think that's something I, I want to do because sometimes when I go to bed, I'm too sleepy to read. But when I wake up, I'm like, yeah, I want to 
I want to read something. So yeah, maybe that will be my new routine. Like I don't want to say to myself, okay, you have to wake up early. And then as soon as you wake up, you have to jump out of bed and go to the garden straight away. That to me is like, oh, I don't want to do that. It's like, um, I think Anna Brown, she says that the first thing you do in the morning should be something that gives you joy, that gives you you know, yeah, that gives you joy. So for me, you know, as much as I love being in the garden, first thing in the morning, I kind of just want to still, I'm still like kind of drowsy and I still, I'm in that relaxed mood. So what I want to do instead is just wake up naturally and then open my curtain so I can see the lovely blue sky and enjoy that, you know, that view of the blue sky from my bed and then just read read a book, whatever book I want to read, whether that's on my iPhone or an actual physical book, and just allow myself to have that half an hour in bed or or an hour or whatever, and then get up and get ready for the day and go to the garden and record my podcast and then after that work on my job and stuff like that. Also, I want to declutter my bedroom. It's like (laughs) this huge project that I've started but it's it's like years and years of accumulation. Like I'm talking over 10 years of stuff that I just need to go through and sort out. So the idea is that the first stage is that you go through everything and you decide, do I want to keep it or do I want to throw it away? And then the next stage is you have to figure out how you can organize it and put things in. Yeah, it can be really overwhelming. I, I find it quite draining as well and I think it's because you have to make decisions and I'm 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 a hoarder <laughs> I just keep everything because I'm like oh I might need that one day you know you never know so I kind of just you know keep everything so I just have to be quite ruthless but not too ruthless I'm going to be gentle with myself and just do it little by little so yeah that's the plan okay so enough rambling sorry about that I'm just like massively long introduction (laughs) so yesterday I started to talk about uh, this brilliant article by Karen Turpin uh, called the ascension uh, sorry it's called the false ascension timeline so but then the episode became too long so I thought okay I'm going to split it up and um, turn it into today's episode so I've already read and discussed half of the article yesterday. So I'm going to attach it to this episode and then continue with that and see how we go. But before I do that, I thought I would do some angel card readings and some positive affirmations and law of attraction cards and stuff like that. So I'll probably make this into one particular episode and then the next episode will be the Um, Karen Turpin's article on the false ascension timeline okay so let's get to some angel card readings I haven't done any oracle card readings for a while so I kind of feel like I want to do that just tap into the collective consciousness and see what my higher self what messages my higher self has what messages we can get from the angelic realm so um, I pulled these cards Um, a couple of days ago so it was just a general reading like what messages do our guides have for us for today okay okay so the first um, card is from Melanie Beckler's Ask Angels um, card deck so the first card is white light chakra activation okay so this reminds me of somebody on YouTube that um, talked about bringing in white light into your heart, into your physical heart center. So if you imagine your heart where it is in your body and you breathe in white light and then that's um, and then turn it into a pale pink color. And then, and so you just do that like three times and it's like really good for connecting with your higher self and just bringing love into your heart center and increasing your vibration. So that's something you can do, you know, whenever you feel like it. So just 
imagine bright white light entering into your heart center and really breathing it in and then and then breathing in a pale pink light and surrounding your heart with white light and pale pink light so yeah so white light is used quite a lot i think in meditation and so this card says white light chakra activation so if you want to activate a particular chakra you can imagine bringing white light to that particular location so um this youtuber was talking about how the first chakra i think it's the sacral i'm not sure the root and so that one is do you feel safe do you have enough money do you have shelter um, are you in danger? So if you ask those questions and you're like, oh, no, I do feel safe. You know, I do have, you know, money uh, to feel comfortable. And I, you know, I don't have, you know, any fears. I'm not in any immediate danger. And so then that chakra is cleared of any blockages and then you can move on to the next chakra and stuff like that. Okay, so the next card... So the next card is Manifest with Love. So this card is telling me that when we want to manifest something, we do it from a point of love because love is the most powerful uh, frequency. It's the most powerful vibration in the universe. And when we manifest from a state of love, it has it's more powerful basically because you're then you're in a alignment with the natural laws of the universe and this actually reminds me what I wanted to talk about so this is actually quite good okay so I'm back so basically this morning I got a reply from a priestess Sekhmet the uh, woman that I was talking about yesterday and I left a message um, the, um, a couple of days ago and she replied so uh, one of the questions I had was um, what are your thoughts about the reincarnation trap and escaping the matrix is that a false paradigm the idea of not turning into the light after death to escape reincarnation back to earth but to go out of the universe to be on other planets so I've recently um, been learning about the demiurge and how you know reality is a matrix and how um after we die so one um one thought is that you know after you die if you go into the light you're then reincarnated reincarnated back onto earth but if you move if you uh, turn away from the light and you say to you know who whoever um, say no I want to be in sovereign I want to choose where I want to go I want to go to other planets or, or anything like that and then you don't go into the light then you're not reincarnated back to earth so so this is stuff that you know I'm, I'm just pondering over you know I don't know if it's true or not and I don't know if I subscribe to it but it's just an interesting thought um, to you know meditate on so I, I was um researching about it and then I had this dream <laughs> it was a bit of a nightmare um so in the dream I I don't go into the light and then I'm walking through a dark tunnel and as I'm working walking through the dark tunnel I have this foreboding feeling like oh my god what if I made the wrong decision and I'm actually going to going somewhere else and I should have gone into the light or something like that because I'm just walking through this dark tunnel and I just have this you know, horrible feeling like, oh my God, what if I made the wrong decision and I was wrong? And then <laughs> I woke up and I was like, oh, this is all stuff, really confusing. And then um, past couple of days, I've just been connecting with my higher self and like, oh, what's the right choice? You know, what, you know, what's the right decision? And then I just kind of felt like I had, I had this really nice and comforting thought come in. And it was like, you know, there is no right or wrong. And, you know, if you connect with your higher self, you know, after death, you know, you'll make the right decision for whatever it is that you want. 
and you know it's not like an exam like oh yes or no answer and oh no you failed and now you're gonna go to a dark abyss you know something like that no you know you, your higher self isn't gonna just leave you stranded so it it doesn't really matter you know there isn't I mean there is and there isn't I don't want to say there's no right or wrong answer but if you have good intentions and you're like, no, I want this, then you imagine what you want after death. Like if you want to go to another planet that's more, you know, heavenly, then, you know, align yourself with that thought. Or if you want to come back to Earth in another lifetime, then, you know, align with that thought. So I think the message that I was getting was, you know, just be easy about it and don't stress about it and, you know, it'll work. It'll work out in the end, and you know, there is no, there is no end. It's continuous, and there is no right or wrong decision. You know, whatever, you know, you decide if you, and you, if you decide in your heart that you, you want it to have the best experience and you want to be in the best world, then that will happen for you, because you have the intention. So it's not about the words. It's not about particular thought or model or paradigm that you align with it's your intention behind it because that's what the universe responds to it doesn't really respond to words or anything like that it responds to feelings how you feel and what level you're vibrating at so that that kind of made me feel a bit better and reassured me and so um priestess Sekhmet just replied to me this morning and she said, this is a really good message. One second, I need to clear my throat. <laughs> That's another thing. Um, in her video, she um, she was clearing her throat. And she was like, that happens um, when you are like clearing your throat chakra. Like when you're talking about things and, and stuff like that. So... And, uh, and she was like, you know, watch out for that. And I'll, I was thinking, oh, I haven't experienced that. And now this morning, <laughs> I'm experiencing it. <laughs> like, literally, I constantly, not constantly, but I feel I have to clear my throat. And, and I think, I can't remember, someone else mentioned about the, there's there's, there's a actual significance about that. Like, there's like a blockage in your throat. And then when you're talking about certain things, it's like helping to clear it up or something like that I have to say it feels really really nice to be in my garden first thing in the morning early in the morning I, I really I just feel really good and I'm grounding myself by walking barefoot on the grass which feels really really lovely and just looking at the blue sky and the birds flying over and looking at the plants and the flowers and the trees and that's also really good um, when you look at greenery like nature greenery the green color in nature it's actually really soothing to your eye it does something um to you so i can't remember exactly but it's really really good for you so if you can look out in greenery things around you if if at all possible i know it's really difficult right now because we're in lockdown and parks are closed and nature parks nature reserves are closed more blocked off but um, wherever you can <laughs> find some green space or green grass or green trees, plants to look at, you know, I would uh, like to encourage you to do that. And it will, you know, calm you down. And, and it's just really, it's really calming. I think they've done a study of that. So, you know, in like concrete areas, you know, they put up trees and things like that. Not only for... You know, oxygen and clean air but also f visually as well so one thing I noticed so yesterday I was listening to my uh, podcast episode I, I had to do some editing because I I mentioned a few things that um, we are not allowed to talk about otherwise your video gets um, deleted um, it gets blocked and um, and then you can all you're also at risk of getting your channel uh, taken down you get strikes so then I went back to my episode and I just edited all edited those bits out and I was like you know I don't want to risk it um it's not <laughs> it's not worth it because I've seen with my own eyes you know videos getting deleted channels getting strikes 
channels getting deleted completely you know people losing their entire you know channel which is heartbreaking because they put in so much work and effort and and then they just lose everything because it's like George Orwellian thought the thought police so we just have to be really careful so I'm just being really really careful and avoiding talking about certain things that I I'm, can't talk about um, but I'm going to try to figure out um, like people are trying to figure out ways to still get the information out there but talking in codes um, cryptic <laughs> messages so um, yeah I think that's what people are working on at the moment so yeah that's probably something I'm going to try to like in future episodes if I want to talk about some something that I feel like or might me, might be like in dangerous territory I might talk about it in philosophical thought experiments or in a fantasy sort of fictional scenario I think that's I think that's really what we can do at the moment because yeah I mean even Priest the Sekhmet she sent me a message yesterday um, let me read that to you actually okay so I'm just getting out the message that Priest the Sekhmet uh, sent to me yesterday and so she wrote hold on I'm just taking off wi-fi because when I'm recording my podcast I like to take off wi-fi because I have my phone in my hand and I just want to reduce my exposure to wi-fi unnecessary unnecessary because I don't really need it when I'm recording my podcast okay so she yeah so she messaged me yesterday telling me so she said um I just received my second strike from YouTube in one week for my truth on I don't want to say what she was talking about (laughs) because so let's just say hold on I'm gonna figure out some coded way to say it hmm Okay, so I'm just going to say, um, I just received my second strike from YouTube in one week for my truth on beep beep um, quarantine videos and could lose my channel a second time. I'm not investing any more time in YouTube over censorship. I suspect a class action suit is coming next. After Kim.com was arrested, it's not worth it. I'm having similar issues with GoDaddy after my site was hacked by Google and now in the process of creating a free blog and calling it a day. I recently inherited a storefront building to develop my products and build my school offline in the nick of time. And then she said, I do have an IG, but the best way is to to subscribe to my blog updates and follow my emails. Thank you for your support of my work, and I hope to meet you one day. So that was really nice. And um, yeah, so because I got that message, I was like, okay, I better download some of her videos that I haven't had a chance to watch in case her channel does get deleted so um i i do subscribe to premium youtube so i'm able to download videos offline so i can watch them so if they do get deleted i'm still able to watch them because i've downloaded them i think i'm still able to watch them i'm not sure but um so far i have downloaded quite a few videos because a lot of videos are getting deleted and before I'm even able to watch them I'm like oh no it's got deleted because there's so much information so I've started and I can't download you know everything because I don't have enough space but the key videos I'm downloading so that I'm able to watch them offline in case they get deleted but um yeah I'm I'm not sure if they they are just downloaded so I can watch them offline or if I download them and even if they get deleted I can still watch them. I'm not sure about that, but yeah. So the reason I even talked about that is because so while I was editing my podcast and taking out certain things that we're not allowed to talk about, um I can I, I realized I could hear birds singing it's like really loud. <laughs> so yeah, so while I was um editing my podcast I heard the birds singing and they were quite loud. It was really really sweet actually it was really calming to to have the birds singing in the background while I'm recording my podcast while I'm talking and it's really interesting because I don't hear them when I'm when I'm talking I mean now I when I consciously oh there's a really beautiful robin right in front of me so cute I love robins 
I love the little birds. I think they're really sweet. Like the ones that are yellow and green. Um, so yeah, so and then it was really funny because at one point I'm talking about something really pivotal and uh, and then there's a bird singing really loudly. <laughs> I feel like it's singing at that particular moment because it resonates with what I'm saying. I'm just having fun with this. So yeah, but now like if I consciously am aware of the bird singing, I can hear them. Like I can hear, can you hear that one singing? Oh, it's not singing now. Oh, trust it to stop singing the moment I like pause to allow you to hear it. But yeah, um, you you'll hear a bird singing. Oh, there you go. You'll hear a bird singing in the background when I'm recording my podcast, and I just think it that just adds a really nice soundtrack, a background soundtrack, so that you can you can imagine that you are in nature while you're listening to my podcast. Okay, so the next message that I want to read to you is the message by. Um, Sekhmet, Princess Sekhmet that she sent me this morning so it was in response to my question of what are your thoughts about the reincarnation trap and escaping the matrix, is that a false paradigm, the idea of not turning into the light after death to escape reincarnation back to earth but to go out of the universe to be on other planets and then she replied saying you can bypass all paradigms through knowledge of self and focus mostly on creating your own reality by always offering powerful, positive intentions in the face of unwanted realities. I mean, that was amazing. I was just like, wow, that really resonated for me. And I was like, okay, so that kind of takes off the pressure of, you know, who's right, who's wrong, you know, is this false, is that is that misinformation? And it's just really overwhelming. And I'm like, I don't know, you know, what to believe. So that that one sentence just kind of kind of just made calmed me down I'm like you know it doesn't matter it's like someone else on YouTube and on, on Instagram was saying that it doesn't really matter what your belief system is as long as it gives you resonance it makes you feel calm and gives you peace in mind so whatever it is that you align to whatever spiritual belief religious belief you know we're all striving for the same thing all we all want connection with true divine source we want connection with our higher self we want to be in alignment with a more positive reality we just have different ways of getting there and they're all valid, you know, Buddhism and all the different religions and spirituality and new age. It, so the idea is whatever resonates for you, that's your truth. And then you build your own model, you build your own reality around that philosophical thought. And then that becomes your truth. And and then that becomes your reality. So there is no right or wrong way or this, you know, fighting between new age and spirituality and religion and you're wrong and this is right and da 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 da. I don't I think it doesn't really matter. I think what matters is what resonates for you and what gives you peace in your heart, what gives you peace in your mind. And this guy, um the spiritual guy, I can't remember his name, but he was like, when you find that philosophical no i think he said whatever you find pursue it to the end and and then really delve into it and you know commit to it you know create your own you know idea around it and then and then pursue it pursue it till the end so i think that's the stage where i am at you know i'm taking ideas from lots of different you know philosoph lots of different philosophies and spirituality and new age and religion and ancient religion just lots lots of different ideas and i'm creating my own model of my own belief system of my reality and you know true divine source and and you know finding peace with that so yeah that's the stage i'm at and i'm just you know exploring everything and and trying to you know, find my own knowing system, belief system that gives me peace in mind. And I think that kind of just takes the pressure off of figuring out, oh, what's right, what's wrong, what's false information, what's misinformation, you know? It's like, it doesn't really matter. What matters is what gives you peace 
and what what grounds you and what gives you that connection with true divine source with god with creator god with the one true god that created everything <laughs> so i'm just going to say that um, sentence again you can bypass all paradigms through knowledge of self and focus mostly on creating your own reality by always offering powerful positive intentions in the face of unwanted realities so she basically said that you can bypass all paradigms by knowing yourself by knowing your higher self by connecting to your higher self and your self that's right here in 3D earth in this reality so you can bypass all those paradigms through knowledge of your self and she did it capital L, s capital s self and focus mostly on creating your own reality so using your thoughts to create your own reality Bec- because i know people s- like say this a lot but really hear it your thoughts create your reality really let that sink in and one day you're going to have your aha moment and you're going to be like oh my god that's so true my thoughts do create my reality like for example let's use this you know lockdown quarantine as an example like all last month i was really pushing against the resistance and i never understood that concept of pushing against resistance i was like what does that mean what what is what does that mean pushing against resistance and i was like i was like really like oh you know we're in lockdown you know and i was like oh there's a bigger agenda behind it and i was like going off all these conspiracy theories and going down the rabbit hole and and stuff and and then and then something shifted in april i've been like and then and then i was like you know what i'm just going to change my perspective about this you know I'm going to use this opportunity to go within and focus on recording my podcast and you know it's really peaceful because you know um the country's on lockdown at, at the moment there're not that many airplanes so there's not uh, much noise pollution <laughs> as I say that there's an airplane going over so I have to put it on pause <laughs> oh the irony <laughs> um and so because of the lockdown uh, the world is under lockdown I've just noticed there's less noise like actually physical noise but also maybe like noise on an ethereal level possibly and and I'm like okay I'm going to take advantage of this and I'm not going to think of myself as an oh I'm under house arrest or I'm in jail and I'm imprisoned and and all of this stuff I'm going to just accept it and just be calm with it and just make the best of it and try to think okay what what benefit am i getting from you know being in lockdown okay it's giving me an opportunity to really go within and i know i keep saying that but what it what that means is connecting with your with yourself with your thoughts and shutting out not shutting out i don't want to mean it in a negative way but just more focusing more on your own thoughts and your own belief systems and trying to reduce outside noise like i'm listening less to you know other people's and just trying to f- focus on what i think and what i believe and i think that's why i really love these podcasts because it just gives me a platform and a chance to just really talk free thinking thought about what i'm thinking and exploring different ideas and stuff like that cuz essentially i'm i'm really just talking to myself because there's nobody else conversing with me um you guys are listening so i kind of feel like that on a telepathic level even though you're going to listen to it in the future and i'm recording it now but on a quantum level i i feel like you're there and you're listening to me and i can hear you guys i mean not literally hear you guys <laughs> i'm not crazy but but you yeah, i don't know i'm not explaining it really well but basically like i can imagine what you would say and then i like respond to that or something like that <laughs> so yeah what was what was i saying what was the whole point of this tangent i've forgotten hold on let me pause it
Oh yeah, now I remember. So your thought creates your reality. So, so my reality, in essence, their circumstances, they didn't change. I'm still in lockdown. So what? So why do I feel different? Because of my thoughts, because I changed my perspective. So instead of putting a negative connotation over it, like, oh, I'm on lockdown, I'm in house arrest, I'm in jail and I didn't do anything, you know, that sort of mentality, I changed down. I was like, oh, I'm on a, a peaceful retreat. I'm on a silent retreat. I'm going within and I'm taking this opportunity to, you know, research um, different philosophies and figure out what reality is and creating my model of reality and connecting with true divine source and connecting with myself and with my higher self and there's a lot less noise and so I'm able to think and express myself and, and I'm able to spend time in the garden and it's really lovely and the weather is so beautiful and I feel really blessed that I can do that. And so I was like, oh, the weather's really lovely and I can just go out and, and you know, it's not cold and it just feels really nice to be able to walk barefoot on the grass and it just feels really nice to... Uh, it's just really fun and exciting to read all these different philosophy ideas about reality and and trying to you know investigate it all and create my own model of my thinking and and so and now I'm just really feeling you know feeling really good and feeling high vibration but my actual physical circumstances are still the same <laughs> I'm still in lockdown can't you know go anywhere uh, all the parks are closed and the nature um, areas are closed where I used to go walking. But then I just shifted my my perspective. So and then I I feel I feel good. So um, and I just feel okay. You know, let's focus on things that I can do. Um, like I want to declutter my bedroom and you know, read books and record podcasts and, you know, talk to you guys and, you know, do all of this stuff and maybe, you know, spend time learning the piano and and taking advantage of, you know, this period of solitude and, you know, how the monk, monks go off on a mountain to <laughs> meditate. So this is like my my version of it. And I'm, yeah, and so that's... That's an example of how your thought creates your reality. Okay, so that was a huge, <laughs> huge tangent. So yeah, so I really like that message that she left me. So um, I'm just going to read um, read it again and then read the next part. It's, it's really, <laughs> I found it really interesting. Like yesterday I was thinking, I was like, I created a whole hour podcast on one paragraph of a comment that she 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 sent me I was like that's pretty that's pretty amazing I mean one that I can just you know waffle and talk for England but um but also that how sometimes people send you information and it's so quantum that you can talk about it for so long on so many different levels and then it sort of um shoots off tangents and then you can talk about other things and bring other things in and stuff like that okay so let's read it again from the beginning you can bypass all paradigms through knowledge of self and focus mostly on creating your own reality by always offering powerful positive intentions in the face of unwanted realities so if you have an unwanted reality, focus, shift your focus to a reality that you do want and you do want to manifest and you do want to be in alignment with. Okay, so then the next part is when the reality offers you sickness, offer it healing. When it offers you death, offer life. We are the matrix. We create it and can control it. The darkness is our shadow. Life is simple and life is good. Stay sovereign and stay free. I mean, how amazing is that? That's such a beautiful message, right? I mean, I feel like you guys are nodding your heads. <laughs> That's really powerful. So what she's saying is when your reality offers you 
a negative reality, <laughs> you offer it a positive one. So then you align yourself with a positive perspective and then that reality actually gets created. You know, there are certain laws in the universe that are true and it doesn't require anyone's belief in it. It just is. Like the law of attraction, it is. It, whether you believe it or not, it, <laughs> it exists. And people say, oh, I don't believe in it. It's all poo-poo and nothing good happens. Yeah, <laughs> you're proving it right there and then that your negative thinking is bringing in you know, a negative sort of reality. And so, and so when she says, um, we are the matrix. So that was really interesting that we actually create our own matrix reality. So we create it and then therefore we can control it. So it's all about being in alignment with the most positive timeline of reality of your life. So the darkness is our shadow. Life is simple and life is good. Stay sovereign. That's, that's the biggest message we can all get from this um, um, being in quarantine, self-isolation, social distancing. Be, oh, sorry, stay sovereign. You are a sovereign being and don't let anyone take that power away from you. Even if physically they can do it or by law they can do it, they can't do it with our minds. We still have our minds. We, we still have uh, free thinking. We can think whatever we want to think. You know, <laughs> we don't, thankfully, <laughs> don't, uh, they don't have the technology of, you know, thought police and monitoring our thoughts and controlling our thoughts. I mean, they probably do on an artificial intelligence technology sort of level. But I don't know, that's just science fiction or if that's possible. I mean, our thoughts can sometimes get hijacked if we're not staying true to who we are and being aware of it and shielding it. But then we don't have to like focus too much on, oh, protecting ourselves and shielding it. Because then you then <laughs> manifest that reality where you need to do it. So... Yeah, it gets a bit <laughs> confusing. Yeah, but the main message is stay sovereign and stay free. Even if staying free, um, you can't physically, because right now we physically can't, because our freedom has been taken away, because we are in lockdown. But we can stay. We can still stay sovereign and stay free by choosing the type of thoughts that we're thinking, and and by choosing what we consume, by what we read, by what we think by what we, you know, yeah, by what we um, align with. They can't, they can't take that away from us. So, yeah, take that <laughs> and smoke it. <laughs> I mean, not literally, but you know what I mean, that phrase. I don't know what, what I'm saying. Okay, so the next angel card. That was, <laughs> that was massively long, about one angel card. So yeah, so the card was manifest with love. So manifest the reality, the timeline that you want to live. Manifest it with your thoughts, with your imagination, from a place of love. And all will be okay. So the next card is crystal clear intention. So this, I think, is connected with manifesting the reality. So have your clear, clear mind, have a clear crystal clear intention of what you want your life to look like on planet earth and also if you want what you want your next life to look like what you want your life to look like after you know after we die if you want to do that you don't have to do that if it like sends you into existentialism and existential crisis and oh no i don't you know i don't want to think about it. that's fine as well so just set your um crystal clear intention for right now of what you want your life to look like after this lockdown is over. And it's not going to last forever. Nothing, you know, no circumstance on earth lasts forever. So, we, you know, we will get through this. And we do have the power to bring in a more positive ascending timeline, even if, you know, there is a possibility of them 
um, bringing in a negative descending timeline but as a collective you know we we are very powerful sovereign beings and yeah so I just um so I just remember that tomorrow is April 13 and I remember uh, Magenta Pixie talking about how the 13 days the first 13 days of April we're gonna after that after 13 days you know things were gonna start to change so you know let's hope and me personally from the research that I've done um I feel like things are going to get better uh, around like after the 20th or so April, like the last week of April, things are going to start to get better and we're going to see a turnaround. Can't, ex- can't exactly explain why I know that. Um, I can't. Um, but um it's something that I researched about two years ago. As they say, follow the money. Um, now I'm like venturing into conspiracy theories. Sorry about the loud airplane. So I've noticed that more airplanes are coming now, today. So maybe that's another sign that things are going to start to get back to normal. I say that in air quotes. So yeah, we just got to stay strong and we've been doing really well I'm really proud of (laughs) the collective you know humans they stay strong they you know um yeah so well done you know this this was hard you know we've never experienced this in human history that we know of so it's the first time every single person has been going through the same thing and so yeah we should be proud of ourselves you know but yeah, I'm, I'm getting the sense that things are going to start to get better. So, yeah, around, let me look at the date. So, um, according to my thesis, my calculations, hopefully things will start to get better around the 20th of April or after that, or end of April, sometime during that week of uh, the 20th of April but I could be wrong but we'll see Um, but yeah things will get better okay so the next card relationship harmony so I hope during this lockdown people have not (laughs) been like going crazy with the people that they're living with and we've been able to have our space even physically we weren't able to because that's really important because you know being around people that you know you live with all the time can also be quite overwhelming but then also people that are living on their own they probably feel lonely and isolated but then that's a good thing about you know us all being connected online that we can talk to each other and have that connection even if physically you know we're not we're not able to be with other people and that can have a you know an effect on our psyche because people are you know natural social creatures we want to be with other people and talk to other people (laughs) so yeah I think after this lockdown people are gonna (laughs) be really like friendly to each other and be like oh my god there's another human being that I can talk to and I can see and and I hope I hope you know people aren't fearful of each other and you know we're still going to you know have to deal with this whole social distancing and hope that eases up because you know that can't be forever otherwise that would just be crazy could you imagine living in a dystopian world where social distancing was forever that would be crazy right how would that even work but hopefully it's just temporarily temporary and we'll move on from there okay so next card letting go learn to let go so i think this was a message about letting go of our ideas of 
you know, what was and, you know, what we're missing out on and then kind of just being at peace with the situation that we're in right now and letting go of the anger and the resentment and the loss of control and just just being in the present moment and just taking it day by day really and just finding your own things that give you joy and peace whatever it is whatever gives you that joy figure figure it out during this time you know hobbies creative things whatever puts you in that bliss state whatever puts you in that free flowing state next card good fortune invite magic in so if we want to manifest a more positive timeline for ourselves then you know we can be open to the idea of magic and you know letting in good fortune so if you if you believe that good things are going to happen for you then it opens up that portal for good things to happen for you and it's not having a Pollyanna sort of mentality like oh life is great and totally being oblivious to what actually reality is looking like no it's it's more about accepting yes this reality is really strange and really weird and almost feels dystopian but I have hope and faith that good fortunes are on the horizon for me and that things will get better um, like Napoleon Hill said that in every I can't remember exactly what the quote is let me look it up okay I found it I love this quote it's by Napoleon Hill also if you've not heard of Napoleon Hill highly highly recommend him you can find his audio books um, it's Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill Bob Proctor talks about him a lot everyone really talks about him a lot and um, yeah so Every adver adversity, every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries with it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. So right now, I think we are all shooting off massive rocks of desires of a change in reality and a better reality, a more positive one. You know how they say, every cloud has a silver lining. So I believe that. I believe if you are in good high vibration you manifest good things our thoughts create our reality okay so next card this card is from the Mag magical dimensions card deck so the other card decks was from i can't remember how to pronounce her name but i will put the all my card deck names in the description okay so the next card adventure innocence play discovery so right now we might not be able to <laughs> physically go on adventure, but we can go on adventure in our minds. We can use our imagination and and play with that, and you know discover you know our the depths and you know our imagination is limitless. You know we can imagine going anywhere, you know fantasy lands or or different countries on on this planet or on other planets so yeah at this moment just take out some time during the day and use your daydreaming to go on little adventures because your your mind doesn't really know the difference between reality and and just your thoughts so if your mind is like actually imagining that you're going somewhere you it's almost like you are actually going there that's how powerful our mind is Oops, sorry. Hit my microphone. Okay, next card. Root portal. So this is a a chakra card activation. So the root portal represented by red, red flames. So this is the first of your chakras. Vitality, stability, survival, fearful. So this chakra um, is to do with survival or like uh, Maslow's would be like the first level of are we safe you know are we fed do we have shelter 
things like that. And if you feel like all those needs are met, then you can move on to the next level. Uh, I think it's uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So in spirituality, it's the root chakra, which is at the base. Oh, that's a really loud bird singing. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it when the bird's singing. So vitality, stability. So do you have stability in your life? Are you still in survival mode or have you moved past that? I think March, we saw a lot of everyone. We were all in like survival mode. Oh my God, we have to get enough food, essentials. You know, we don't know how long we're going to be in lockdown. We don't know if we're going to be able to actually even leave the house, even to go to the supermarket. So we were all in that. I think we were all in that first, not all of us, but I don't want to generalize, but quite a lot of us were in that survival mode that first chakra that rep reptilian brain mode and when we're in that mode you know we're not really able to think other things and you know we're just like oh we gotta focus on surviving and you know and we're in that fearful mode as well but I think I don't know if I'm just feeling this or if the collective is feeling this but feeling a, a shift or maybe it's just me projecting. It could just be me projecting because I've, I'm feeling less fearful and I'm just feeling more at peace and calm. I don't know why, but I just slowly feeling a shift. Maybe recording these podcasts and talking to you guys. That's like giving me purpose. <laughs> and yeah, it just feels really, really good to talk to you guys. And I really appreciate you listening. So thank you. Okay next card so these cards are from mario de gua oracle of the angel cards so higher consciousness this is a message about connecting with your higher self um i was like thinking i was like oh you know how do i know i'm you know connecting with a being of you know true divine light or false light and then I'm like thinking okay you know I don't need to worry about that because I'm just going to connect with my higher self so I've been doing that a lot uh, recently just connecting with my higher self and having telepathic conversations in my head and getting answers and some of the answers I'm getting I'm like really let me ask again <laughs> and then I get the same answer and I'm like really <laughs> and it's like some sometimes I I hear the answers as in like actual words in my head or sometimes it's just a feeling like soul telepathy sort of thing but um yeah connect with your higher self go within just talk to your higher self you know if you want comfort if you want answers and then just see what you get and and you know if you're quiet then you'll you'll hear a you, you will hear the answers in your mind. Okay, next. Opportunity. So, I guess, you know, how can we use this time that we are in, that we're self-isolating, how can we use that as an opportunity for growth, for opportunity of working on ourselves? I know a lot of people in, not a lot, but some people are saying, oh, you know, don't worry about it just you know go with the flow and don't pressurize yourself to like oh I really have to hustle I really have to do this and this and this and be really super productive so I agree with that you know let's not put pressure on ourselves but at the same time you know if there is something that you want to pursue and you want to work on I guess this would be a good opportunity to like Take teeny tiny steps towards it. Like for me, I really want to declutter, but I find it really overwhelming and it's something I do procrastinate on because I'm like, oh, it's really stressful for me. But then I'm like thinking, oh, this is a really good opportunity for me to do it because I can't go anywhere. So why I should use this time to do it. And so then I'm just going to break it up into little, little tiny steps so that will be more manageable. The reason we get stressed is when we come across something and it's just so big and we're like oh my god I can't do it because it's so overwhelming but if we break it down into little bite-sized chunks and then we're like okay I can do that and then sometimes I use the method of the 15 minute timer method so during my PhD uh, um, during writing my thesis I 
you know, it was really overwhelming. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to write uh, an entire thesis, you know, within a, a year or however long I had. And I was like, okay, I'm, let's just break it up into little bits. So I had, I bought this book and it said, writing your thesis and writing your PhD thesis, I think, uh, in 15 minutes a day. And I was like, oh. And she was like, you can do anything for 15 minutes, even if you really hate it. So she shows, so she was like, just set a timer on and then just write, just write whatever. It doesn't even matter if it's, you know, it's not, it doesn't make sense or it doesn't, it's not correct or it's messy or anything like that. So when you start writing and you get that flow, then it encourage more, incre- in, <laughs> encourages more writing. So it's just that that fear of starting but if you say I only have to do it for 15 minutes and then after that timer goes off I can just stop and but sometimes I used to feel like oh the timer went off but I was I was in because I started it was like free flowing it's like when you turn on the tap the water then keeps on flowing so then I would just carry on writing so I I use that method sometimes when it when I want to do when I want to start decluttering and I just keep procrastinating I'm like okay I only have to do it for 15 minutes and then I can just stop and do something else. And then sometimes, and most of the time, the timer will go off and I'll be like, oh, I, well, I've started now and I'm in the flow and I want to finish this particular part. And then I just carry on. So, yeah, try to uh, implement the 15 minute rule. If there's anything you need to do, maybe it's a chore or or something. Or maybe it's something creative and you're like, oh, a bit, you know, daunted by the task. Set a timer for 15 minutes and just stop. And then tell yourself you can just stop and do something else after the 15 minutes. So I'm going to take my own advice <laughs> and do that today because I really want to do some, really want to get back to decluttering so I'll set my time for 15 minutes and just try to do as much as I can and it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be the the final decision but if I just start you know slowly slowly it's cumulative you know everything that we do it adds up and then at the end we're like oh I did it like my cupboard my clothes cupboard that was a huge project that took me a very long time I took all my clothes out of the cupboard, everything. I completely emptied out all my cupboards, my two cupboards. And um, and then I went through each item of clothing. Do I want to keep it or do I want to, you know, give it away to charity? And then after that, then I went through e- and then I organized all my clothes in like sections, like all my T-shirts, my black T-shirts together and then put my white T-shirts together and my leggings, my tops, you know, I, I then organized them into little sections and then and then the next step would be folding them in the Marie Kondo, Marie Kondo way? KonMari way, it's not Kondo, Marie Kon, the KonMari method of folding, how she folds like in the all... I can't describe it but you can look it up on YouTube and then I would put all the clothes in little drawers and stuff and it was so satisfying when I would do one and I was like I would take pictures and like send it to my friends like look at my lovely organized drawer and my cupboard and my and I afterwards I felt so proud of myself and it did take me a a long time to do it but then afterwards I felt so proud of myself and now I have a organized clothes cupboard and you know I'm keeping it I'm maintaining it so I'm not so every time you know I I I make sure I fold my clothes and put them away you know tidily it's not a word put them put them away in a tidy manner so yeah so if there's anything that you've been procrastinating on and you can do in your home um just just do a little bit like just start it give yourself a 15 minute um timer task and and then you'll feel like you've accomplished something and be, and it makes you feel really good so yeah i'm taking my own advice for that today i will do and so even like my clothes cover like some of the stuff you know i've organized and i'm like mm, i'm not sure if i want to keep it like that you know forever you know i could probably improve on that and you know so then it's okay it's not it's not gonna I kind of like give myself I let myself off the hook like this isn't the final way I'm gonna have certain clothes organized you know maybe I can improve 
during the next stage. So this could just be the first stage. So that way it kind of, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think perfection is the enemy of doing. That's good. Did I make that up or did I hear that? I don't know. <laughs> but it sounds really good. So yeah, doing something is better than having something by not doing something because you think, oh, it has to be perfect and then you just don't do it. Okay, so, oh, th that was the last card. We're done. We're done with the Oracle Angel Card Messages. Wow, that was an hour-long Oracle Card Message. So the next thing I want to do, I want to read some Law of Attraction cards and then finish off with Positive Affirmation and then I will end this particular podcast episode before I talk on... Um, other esoteric information which I will make another separate episode about. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on pause. Before I do that, before I put it on pause, uh, I just want to say it's actually really nice to be able to talk during these podcasts because, you know, self-isolating, you know, we don't want to lose the ability, not that we will lose the ability, but just be, just talking, it's really nice to just talk and actually hear your voice and actually say words out loud so if you can i would encourage you if you're you know on your own just you know get your phone out and record um like audio diaries and just talk to your future self about what you're going through and what's happening right now it could be like one of those like films <laughs> you know like um mars when matt damon is stuck on Mars and he creates these little log entries of his day-to-day -day activities so you can do something like that it's very cathartic it really is 